Thanks for staying with us on this edition of Visions. Excited about our guest who decided to come back and be with us. She told us she's going to come back, and she's here today. Dawn Owens, who is an owner of Tandem Early Education Consulting LLC. Mrs. Owens, thanks for being with us again on the program. Thank you for having me. Uh, glad to get a chance to talk with you again. We had a great time last time, so you're going to give us, give us an update because you got an event that's coming up uh, here briefly. But, but in my research, you know, I know you're an educator and everything. Uh, I, I, I see the name of your company is called Tandem. So I went to Miriam Webster and I saw that. It looks great. So, so it says Tandem. How do, you, how do you describe the meaning of Tandem? Well, it means to work in partnership because that's what I really do. I work with programs. Um, I partner with programs to do events, to do professional development, to help them with their quality. So I really work in collaboration with um, the clients that I serve. Okay, all right, I like that, I like that. Well, well um, now, uh, you've got an event that's coming up uh, on, uh, uh, what is it, next month? It's actually in January of okay. 2017, okay. and it's the 11th annual Alabama First Class Pre-K Conference, and it's going to be in Mobile, and I'm really excited about the event. We're expecting 2,500 participants, and the theme for the upcoming year is from practice to understanding, navigating diversity and inclusion in the pre-K classroom, mm -hmm. and I think it's just a really good time for a topic like that, and some of the speakers that we're having are for the first time coming to Alabama. So that's a huge deal as well. Um, one in particular, um, I was watching CNN one morning and they were talking to this young author and he wrote a book called Nelson Beats the Odds and it's self-published about um, the stigma of the black male in special ed. Mm. And he was in special ed all through school, labeled. Um, it was horrible for his self-esteem. He graduated high school with a 1.8 GPA. Wow. And now he is a self-published author of two books. The first one, a best-selling book, Nelson Beats the Odds. And then his second book, Tamika's New Dress, um, about a child in foster care dealing with toxic issues. And um, he has done so well. He has a master's degree in social work. Wow. And he is like 28 years old and amazing. And what I want people to understand from that is it doesn't matter how you start. There's, that's no indication of where your journey is going to go or how it's going to end. And he didn't find his passion till he was in junior college. Wow. You know, so it's, he's amazing, and he will be one of the speakers amongst many. Another one that is coming is Dr. Kimberly Johnson. She just recently got her Ph.D., and she is working in a, um, a cohort at Harvard postdoctoral program talking about leadership and education, and she is so passion, she, passionate. She's written 18 books. and um, 18. 18 books. Okay. Not, 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 not just eight. 18 okay. and one of the things that she shares about her life is she is so grateful that she was part of the Head Start program. She came from a family that no one had been to college mm -hmm. or higher, had gone higher in education mm -hmm. and she has been so successful and that's a testament to getting the right start from the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, so it's going to be an awesome, awesome conference. So, so now the pre-K conference now, you know, I was, uh, I was, I was at the barbershop the other day and this, this child, he had to be um, one and a half, two, two years old tops, but he had him, he had his iPad, he was playing this game and he had his headsets on. Mm -hmm. I mean, so we're, we're starting early. We are starting early, but I want to caution parents about that. If you look at current research, we're seeing a trend where children are coming to school and they're not ready. The language development is not where it is, and that is somewhat attributed to too much face time mm. with devices. And another um, alarming thing in current research is that children coming from middle class educate homes with educated parents are not having the type of language that we are accustomed to seeing because parents are detached and not talking to uh -huh. them uh -huh. and they are using their devices you know we are in a different time with social media and right. all of those things so you have to be really really careful children especially our youngest children need that um, 
one-on-one. -on -one. They need to see you. They need to be hearing words mm -hmm. and they need to be using words okay. and connecting. So that's really, really important. Well, you know, one of the other things that, that I've been, um, I, I heard about is our use of devices is affecting our ability to write. Absolutely. Probably. Absolutely. And so you still need to be able to hold a pencil in your hand. And another thing, books. You read books on Kindles now, but it's right. something about holding the book in your hand and turning the pages. Like everything new isn't always good. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Or you don't have to throw out old things mm -hmm. because there are new things. That's right. That's so, right. yeah. Take, so, so, so now this conference, this, this 11th annual, and so mm -hmm. your company is helping to facilitate? We coordinate the conference, yes, okay. for the Alabama Department of Early Childhood Education. We okay. coordinate that conference excellent, for them. Excellent, excellent. Um, well, now, uh, how many people normally attend? Okay. Last year we had 1,978 at the end. We prepped for 2,000. Wow. This year with the funding increase and um, just the recognition of how um, the quality of the conference, we are preparing for 2,500, and we have over 1,900 registered as of this morning. Wow, wow. So now, this, the conference is going to be uh, in Mobile? It's going to be in Mobile. Is that where you're from? I am from Mobile, okay. so it's like going home. To, I it okay. is, it <laughs> is. So, um, yes, at the Author Our Outlaw Convention Center. Mm -hmm. So that's where we'll be, and um, it's a three-day event. It's from January 4th. Mm -hmm. through January the 6th mm -hmm. in Mobile. Excellent. Now, op opportunities in, in early childhood education. So I just had a really unique op opportunity. A professor from um, the University Jacksonville called me, okay. and she asked me to come speak to her students, her early childhood students. And so um, she was like, I just don't think they understand what's out there when they graduate. And um, I went, I was pleasantly surprised because she had 42 students, and that is unusual. And she had three male students. Okay. But one of the students, I just talked about some of the things that was happening in Alabama. And one student raised her hand and said, oh my God, I'm so excited. I just thought all I could do when I graduated was go work in a daycare. And I was like, no, honey, you can do so many things. There's a lot of opportunity. Um, you can work in a classroom, in a public school, in a pre-K. You can work for pre-K. You can work for the state. There are opportunities in advocacy. You know, there are so many things. And I, I just thought, oh my God, I can't believe that you thought that your choices were so limited mm -hmm. because they're not. Okay, all right, okay, good. And um, so uh, so she was, that, that student was enlightened. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was, it was a good opportunity. It was good to hear, talk to students too, to just see what they're thinking because um, the professor said she called me because she realized they weren't really connected uh -huh. to what was happening uh -huh. and what could happen for them professionally. I understand, I understand. One of the other points you wanted to uh, make today is that there's a reauthorization of the No Child Left Behind. Yes, and I want to say that for all parents. So now the new law is the Every Student Succeeds Act, or ESSA. So if you've been hearing that, um, t go out and read about it and be knowledgeable about it. Parents are the biggest advocates that a child can have. And there is a huge portion of that document which is the new law, that is dedicated to early education. And we just know that um, it matters what we do with our youngest yes. children every single day. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, well, uh, and so what, what is going to be the effect of the, of the, of the reauthorization? How, did that, how will that impact? I think we're going to see an increase in quality not only in programs for preschoolers but infant toddler programs because babies, you know, your brain is developing every single day. And so from the very first moment they come into the world, they are ready to learn. They really, really are. We don't think that, but they are. Mm -hmm. And so um, improving infant toddler care, people that work with even our babies need to have some specialized training and knowledge about child growth and development. Mm -hmm. And so I think that we're going to see, now that we've worked so hard on pre-K, mm -hmm. I think we're going to see an increase in quality in our um, our infant toddler program, mm -hmm. so starting from birth. And I think that is 
I think that's going to be great for now, our state. Now, now, improving the quality, that's a good point, improving the quality in the infant and toddler programs. I mean, it's, you, you can go and you can take courses, you know, from some of the local colleges. Mm -hmm, you can. And, and, and you can do it without necessarily getting a degree. In, in you, arena. you can, yeah. however, we are moving towards having a degree. Yeah. There is the um, CDA, the Child Development, it's a credential. Uh -huh. However, you get a lot of training in child development. They offer it at Trinum. Mm -hmm. And so there is a definite um, train you can follow yeah. in that area. And, um, you know, everybody, when I go to a barber, they have had classes yes. and they are licensed, right. Right? right? That's right. When I go to a doctor, they have had lots of schooling That's and right. they are qualified. They have all their credentials on the wall. And so we want to see that happen in Alabama with people mm -hmm. that care for our children, right. even our babies. And even, I don't know, we, there's a huge campaign in the state, don't be in the dark. There's so much unlicensed care yeah. in Alabama and so um, that doesn't mean that it's bad but you know we just want to set the standard that if the place where you take your pet to be groomed has to have some kind of licensing of course you want the place where you leave your precious baby okay, has to right. have the same thing that's right that's right that's right excellent excellent well I tell you we're, we're closing in on time we want to let you once again um, give uh, our viewers the information about the conference uh, so, so that's going to be the 11th annual Alabama First Class Pre-K Conference? Yes, it's the 11th annual Alabama First Class Pre-K Conference and registration is open open right now. You can go to www.children.alabama.gov uh -huh. and register or get more information and see if it's something that you would be interested in attending. It's going to be an excellent program. The speakers that are coming are outstanding. Uh -huh. So. Um, it's going to be an awesome event. Now, so we've got your contact information uh, on the screen. They can call you. Absolutely. Uh, and, uh, and get some more information. Absolutely. Uh, about, about the conference. And Absolutely. So, so, and so we're going to look forward to you also presenting the 12th annual conference. Even now. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Because we know, we know it's going to go well. Absolutely. That's my hopes. Excellent, excellent. Well, Mrs. Olds, we want to say thanks for coming to be with us. Thank you for having me. Enjoyed it. Certainly want to encourage uh, those who are, are watching us to uh, please attend that conference. That's the 11th annual first class pre-K conference in Mobile, uh, Alabama. And that's going to do it for us on this uh, edition of Visions. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.